Looking at the sun, every person in history has wondered why we couldn't just get all our energy needs from the best source known. It already gave us warmth, comfort and food. So why not electricity too? Many people have tried to harness the sun's energy, but most fell short because we didn't actually understand the energy from the sun very well. Mostly because we didn't understand the atom very well. Plants get all their energy requirements from the sun. Imagine humans could be like plants. What if all you needed to do is go out and lie in the sun to get your energy needs? Well, some animals have managed to figure this out by managing to harness plants' special abilities. The problem is that you would have to somehow find algae and then have it live under your skin and you'd be green all over like seaweed. So, how does humanity plan to copy plants and what they do? Well, we can learn by copying first the shape of plant leaves, large flat surfaces pointing up. But then there's the challenge of using the same chemical processes as chlorophyll to make energy. Plants have a very clever molecule called chlorophyll that is very good at taking energy from the sun and converting it to chemical potential energy. Question is, how does the sun's energy get here and where does it come from? You may know that the sun is a very, very, very large ball of hydrogen. The ball is so big that gravity crushes the center of the sun to about 100 million degrees. That allows hydrogen nuclei to combine into helium in a process called fusion. It releases a massive amount of energy, so much so that mankind's largest and most destructive bombs use this energy. So, this energy means that electrons in the outer layer of the sun are always being excited and when they fall back down, they release a photon of light. We all know that sunlight provides energy mostly in the form of light. Our ability to see comes from chemical reactions caused by the different colors of light in our eyes. Some of it we can see, others we can't. And these types of light provide the energy. Some warm our skin, while others, like ultraviolet, give us dangerous skin burns. Well, we know that the sun's energy does get here because virtually all life depends on it. But three very important questions remain. How is light made? How does light move energy? And what happens to that energy when light stops somewhere? The answers may bend your brain a bit, but in this series of lessons, we'll be looking at light in a very different way. We need quantum physics and some of the smartest people that have ever lived to solve the riddle of light. It turns out that light has a lot to do with electrons. When electrons lose energy, they give off light. And when they take in light, they increase in energy. It's a lot like a bank balance between atoms. When the balance goes down, the light carries some energy to another electron, increasing its energy.